A very warm welcome to everyone. This is a very special and precious time of the Christian year and with many of us gathered together, a bit virtually to share it, will I'm sure be a joyous and uplifting occasion. This year's Advent programme we will listen to readings, hymns, a story and I thank all of those who are taking part for their support and particularly time spent in preparation. This year has been very hard for many people. Some of us may have lost loved ones. Some of us may have lost our livelihood. Many of us have had feelings of isolation and despair. Being part of the Fellside Churches has helped many people in our community, knowing there is support through prayer and a friendly face at the door. We continue to celebrate the acceptance by Mary and say Alleluia at the coming of the Christ child. We hear that Mary said to the angel Gabriel, I am the Lord's servant. Let it happen to me as you have said. What an acceptance. We are reminded that the Lord may not ask of us what he asked of Mary, but nonetheless, the challenges invariably come calling us to undertake journeys of faith which we could never imagine possible. We all have a part to play, a unique role in making real the love of Christ, here on earth, here and now. So let us say Alleluia and give thanks for the acceptance by Mary and acknowledge the coming of the Son of God, Saviour of the world, through our celebrations tonight. Isaiah 9 verses 2 to 7 The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He'll establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this.
Hello and welcome to this recording for the Mother's Union service. As you can see, I've tried to make it festive. We've got the tree here in uh, the vicarage dining room decorated by Deborah. There's all kinds of things on there, from a wise man's camel to a donkey to nativity scenes, you name it. And for the focus of this recording, I'm going to concentrate on a charitable work that was uh, started by Life Words, formerly known as the Scripture Gift Mission. Uh, and this work was started 20 years ago, and it's called The Pavement Project. And originally it focused on street children. And so I thought this was a good thing to talk about at a service like this with the aims of the Mother's Union, of family values, uh, the ethics and so on of Mother's Union. And as I say, this work was formed 20 years ago, focused on street children. And you may be aware that street children are some of the most at risk people in the world, vulnerable to disease, exploitation and abuse. Although the work these days deals with children in crisis full stop. And the work was developed by child psychology and trauma specialists over a four year period. And the project partners with hundreds of organisations, large and small, to train workers in a Bible based counselling tool that specifically addresses children's self worth. And 90% of the children who go through the counselling show significant in, uh, improvement in their self-worth. Results have been tracked over time, long-term case studies have been carried out, and feedback gathered from hundreds of organisations. And it's been found that as children are given the chance to talk about what has happened to them, and as they hear the Bible stories, that speak directly to their hurt emotions, then healing comes and that produces long-term change. And over those 20 years, 40,000 young people have been through the programme. And I have with me a letter uh, about the payment project that gives some more information. And we're told in this letter that the stories that the project hears are often too tragic to reveal fully. Abuses of all kinds, sexual, violent, uh, violent issues, uh, emotional and drug related issues as well. And of course, the project workers long to counsel the children personally, but it's simply because of the coronavirus unsafe to do so. So just like many other organisations, including the church and including ourselves here in the fell side, they've had to reimagine how they go about things. And after rigorous testing, they found that they can effectively counsel children via their phones or device with an app such as a tablet or even on screen directly in children's homes and with their families and they reckon that children's lives are absolutely being transformed. And so embracing technology is how they are making a difference right now. So that's uh, one of the ways, excuse me, I dropped my notes there. So that's one of the ways they found that uh, they're making a difference. And there's a real urgent need right now in South and Central America to name just two places. And what the project is aiming to do is to provide tablets at a cost of 50 pounds each and uh, various, what they call the green bags, which are literally a green bag full of tried and trusted resources that are used in the counseling work. And they are 75 pounds each. So maybe you personally, uh, look for a charitable cause to support at Christmas time. Maybe you'd like to consider this work or simply you might like to learn a little bit more about the work. If so, go to uh, LifeWords Pavement Project, just Google that and the information will come straight up and give you all the information that you need. And perhaps as I say, you'd like to support that personally this Christmas time. Or 
when things get back to normal maybe we could as a mothers union consider us a social event where all the process all the proceeds i should say raised at that event go to an organization like the pavement project so i just thought i'd share with you a few things about that project that works with children and uh, families around the world and aim very much in line of course with the aims of the mothers union their values and their ethics so thank you for listening to this and as usual bye for now bye Like a candle flame, flickering small in a darkness, uncreated light shines through infant eyes. God is with us, Alleluia. Come to save us.
Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she, who was said to be unable to conceive, is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left.
we've just had read for us Luke's account of the Annunciation when the angel Gabriel comes to Mary, a young girl, perhaps 12 or 13 years old, because that was the age that um, young girls were betrothed in the time of Jesus and Mary, and invites her to become the mother of God, the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, Theotokos, the God-bearer. And in that encounter, something quite extraordinary happens because it is through Mary's yes to what the angel Gabriel asks of her that the incarnation is made possible and all that salvation work that God is going to work through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so all the stuff of Christmas and all the stuff of the life and ministry of Jesus and all the stuff of his death and resurrection all become possible because a young girl says yes to a quite extraordinary and unreasonable proposition at least that's what we would probably think about it as adults and maybe that has something to tell us about what God does and how God works in his world because as an adult, we will probably say, you must be joking to Gabriel's proposition. But Mary says yes. Mary says yes, demonstrating something which Jesus later goes on to talk about in his own ministry, which is that sense of trust and that sense of openness uh, that so often children display at least before they're taught otherwise by the adults around them. You'll remember in Jesus' teaching that he invites us to be like little children. For unless you become like one of these, Jesus says, you will have no place in the kingdom of heaven. And it doesn't mean that we all have to go back and be like children. Um, or behave in childish kind of ways. But there is something about the childlikeness of children that is vitally important. And we've already seen it demonstrated a little bit in Mary's Yes, but it's there also in the children that we see around us in our daily lives. There is something that children have which all too often gets lost by the time people come to be adults. That sense of trust, that sense of openness, that sense of willingness to enter into relationships, to be friends, to forgive, to put bad things behind us and to, to rebuild relationships. Um, that sense of fairness and justice, that sense of knowing what is right and wrong, which children so often inherently manage and yet so often we also manage to lose by the time we get to be adults. And it makes an interesting comparison. There's the stuff that we are naturally seem to be hardwired to be able to do. And then there's the stuff of learned behaviour. Just recently I've been reading some books about the questions of race and our own country. And one of the things that has stood out for me very strongly in that is the research that is quite unambiguous about the fact that children, when they are born, know nothing of race. That all that stuff about different people and different ethnicities and different colours and all the attitudes that we ascribe to those differences are all learned behaviour, uh, all stuff that the adult world has taught children. Children, when they are born of whatever ethnic background, whatever colour skin, whatever culture, they're born with that natural sense of openness and that natural sense of trust and that natural sense of being able to respond and relate to people of whoever they are, of whatever colour or anything else that they may be. 
and in those relationships to find goodness and to find joy. And so as we come to this Advent season, as we prepare ourselves not only to celebrate the birth of Jesus at Christmas time, something that we're all looking forward to doing, however that's going to work out this year, and just at the time of recording this, we don't know. But however we're going to celebrate it this year, and however we are going to uh, prepare ourselves for that time when we have to meet God for ourselves uh, as we account for our lives, maybe it's a good time to reflect on uh, that sense of childlikeness to which Jesus calls us. It's perhaps um, that very sense of childlikeness that makes Jesus such a disconcerting person for so many because he takes with him into that adult life that sense of openness and that sense of trust and that sense of forgiveness and that sense of being able to make relationships with anybody and everybody that sense of justice um, that so often we lose when we become adults. And yet Jesus carries it on and invites us to share with him in it. So maybe in this Advent season, as we prepare for Christmas, as we prepare to encounter incarnation afresh, maybe we need to rediscover some of that child likeness in our own lives. Maybe we need to allow the child within us to lead us, that we don't need to cover it over with all those layers of adultdom that displace the trust, that displace the openness, displace the ease of forgiveness, that displace that sense of fairness and justice that so much is the life of children may we maybe we need to let the child within us lead us on the path of the kingdom of god so that we can reflect those childlike attitudes about which jesus taught amen <laughs> Did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will calm the storm with his hand? Did you know? That your baby boy has walked where angels trod. When you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God. Oh, Mary, did you know? Oh,
Lord of all creation. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect land? The sleeping child you're holding is the great. So as we prepare to welcome Jesus, our Lord and Saviour, born in a stable in Bethlehem, to unmarried parents, born into relative poverty, born to an uncertain future, let us pray. And I'm going to use a form of prayers written by a feminist theologian called Nicholas Lee and just encourage us to think and to ponder as we sit quietly waiting and being. The altar is the waiting space of our emptiness The altar is the waiting space of our loneliness. The altar is the waiting space of our longing. The altar is the waiting space of our hunger and our desire for justice, for truth, for compassion. Come, O Christ child, into the altar that represents our emptiness. Into the altar that represents our loneliness. Into the altar that represents our longing. Into the arms of our hunger. Into the heart of our desire. And we've placed a cloth on the altar, symbolising our waiting. We are waiting for you. We are looking for you. We are longing for you. We are laying this cloth of our woven dreams and aspirations. We are bringing the fabric of our lives, many textured, multicoloured, torn, frayed and fragile, yet tense with a woven structure out of conflict, out of laughter and out of tears. So come, O Christ child, clothe yourself with the cloth of our humanity. Adorn yourself with the colours of our createdness. Weave the cloth of your love and your longing for justice around us. Wrap us in your vulnerability, compassion, and tenderness. Come and live among us and be present in the warp and weft of our days. So give us the resolution to say no to the good so that we will be ready to give our yes the better. 
give us the courage to keep living in the open-endedness of future without foreclosing the mysterious work of your spirit in our haste or in our fear. Give us the persistence to stay in the wilderness of unknowing until we are ready to hear your call. Give us the strength to keep still and waiting when all about us is pushing towards movement and activity and choice. Give us the acceptance to live these days in uneventfulness, simplicity and hiddenness without craving, excitement, destruction or change. Give us the grace to live in the emptiness of not doing without the rewards of achievement, fulfilment or apparent success. Give us the wisdom to discriminate between our own impatience to move forward and your spirit's deep stirring of our spirits when the time is right to move. Give us the faith to trust in your obscurity, the obedience to stay faithful to your mystery and the courage to keep faith with your inscrutability. Amen.